Today, it's all about epoxy and using it over plywood. So we've actually got a couple little videos leading up to this one where we're, we've already started work on our sample piece here. And the idea is that this represents kind of a mock-up transom and stringer section made out of marine plywood. Now, you could certainly replace the marine plywood for something like Kusa or Thermolite, uh, another high-density foam core, but this is just a good medium that a lot of people are used to working with. And again, for the sake of time, you can go back a couple videos back and you can see how we actually used our custom-made transom clamps to bond this together. Uh, we've already made a real nice epoxy fillet down there in the corner. So when it comes to the wood prep, if you want to just kind of a quick backstory, we're going to use an aggressive grinder with like a 24 or 36 grit. And before we even start putting this together, we want to put an aggressive texture on this because plywood can have either imperfections or it can be dirty or it can have a slick mill finish. So we're going to put some tooth on this thing. Just a good... Just like, just like so. You also want to consider that plywood will soak up humidity or moisture in the air. And you want low humidity when you're going to be epoxying over plywood. So a, a, a mild temperature day with low humidity is going to be the ticket. But you can also help the plywood a little bit with a little bit of heat. And we're just using a heat gun to warm up that surface prior to glassing. Now a heat gun is like an industrial hair dryer and it is very hot. So you're going to want to be moving. The surface is nice and warm. That's going to cook any moisture off of the surface. Now again, prior to glassing, you want all your prep work done. We want a nice radius or radii on the top of your stringers or anything that we're going to try to wrap epoxy over. And there's a couple ways you can do that. You can do it with your boat builder's friend there. Again, your little high speed grinder and we can put a nice bevel or radius. Now this is just one layer three quarter. Typically we would have two, but the dust is gonna fly. Just like that. Now, one of the other little great little tools for putting a radius or radii is that little Bosch palm router. Here we go. I'm gonna finish this edge right there. Very nice. Now again, all these power tools, you're gonna wanna be careful with them. And sometimes just a little sanding block, little 3M block with some Velcro and 80 grit paper is a great way to come back. And clean up those edges. Just remember folks, that fiberglass and epoxy it doesn't like hard, sharp corners. It needs a nice, smooth transition. So, um, so what we're gonna do now, we are jumping ahead and I wanna show you guys, at this point, obviously, we have already glued this together, radiused it, sanded it, and we've also primed this piece of wood with epoxy prior to today. So it's had several days to cure. And sometimes you may do that, say for example, if you have that really nice low humidity day, where the temperatures are optimal, the wood is dry, it's in good condition, and um, you just wanna go ahead and seal the wood up. You can put a primer coat of epoxy on the wood to seal it. 
The only thing is that most epoxies or a lot of epoxies will produce an amine blush or an amine blush and that has to be cleaned prior to your subsequent coats. Now we also did another little short video on the channel here about how to remove amine blush. Now there are some epoxies that are two part, two to one, that don't produce much of an amine blush at all. And if that's the case, then great. But what we're doing, we clean the amine blush and one of my favorite little tools for working in an area like this and, and getting this surface would be a little DeWalt. This is just a square orbiting or oscillating grinder and I've just taken like a 40 grit disc paper and I'm gonna put a mask on. We're gonna do just a little bit of sanding. All right, I think you get the general idea. You can also use just a good old fashioned block. If you don't have a power tool, you can get in here think you guys get the general idea now I don't try to sand completely through your primer coat you just want to get a little bit of texture or surface on there and um, it's one of those things that I don't consider that the same as part of the amine blush removal because if you haven't removed the blush properly it'll gum up your paper like crazy and you can see that paper is not gummed up so that means we did a decent job of removing the amine blush prior. Now that's one of those things, as boat builders, a lot of folks are always curious, how do I know if my boat is built out of epoxy resin or polyester resin? I would probably say 97%, 98% of all boats on the market today are built out of either polyester resin or maybe a few percent would be vinyl ester it is very, very rare for a boat to be built completely or entirely out of epoxy. Usually boat builders only use that in specialized areas where they need a bonding or waterproofing. But it's a, it's a little trickier to work with when you're in production, but it's good for the home user. It has some qualities to make it good for you guys at home. There we go. Now what we'll be doing is we'll have subsequent layers that will come over and matter of fact again we'll be doing a layer over the stringer here and i'm going to take a little bit more we just kind of had a rough a rough stab at it but you can see i can take a little bit more out of that dart or pleat and it really really helps for you guys to get a visual beforehand and again this is what we call a dry fit. I'm going to take a little more out of there. A little dark, a little dark. Now we're not really taking any material out. We're just going to relax. So if you're new to epoxy or even working with composites at all, West Systems is probably going to be one of the most familiar or common brands you're going to run into. And they sell these little pump systems that basically are calibrated so that you can run one pump to one pump and obviously the ratios are not one to one but it's one pump to one pump and that's going to give you the correct mix epoxy is not like polyester or vinyl ester resins where there's a range of catalyst ratios that you can use this needs to be right on and we are using the fast hardener today. They have different hardeners kind of based on the temperature. And the warmer it is, 
the cooler the catalyst. For example, they also have the 206 slow hardener. So if it's the summertime and it's crazy, crazy hot and you need a long work time or you're working with thick fills of putty, like say if you're really putting a lot of the peanut butter in an application, these materials are exothermic, meaning the more mass you have, the more heat they generate. And as they generate heat, the cure goes off even faster. And you get this runaway little wood stir and stick, about two minutes of mix. You get this runaway overheating reaction. And matter of fact, we actually did a video, I'm trying to look for the sample piece, where we actually over catalyzed some polyester resin and some epoxy resin in a large mass to see what it would do. It'll get smoking hot. So um, you wanna be aware of that. And generally what I like to do is mix this very thoroughly in what we call a little popcorn cup. We buy these from one of our local distributors. That came over from the nice folks at BOW, our boat owner's warehouse there in Foley, Alabama, a little town just north of us. Appreciate you guys. I was in there this morning, got to see everybody. But yeah, so the little disposable popcorn cups work great. About two minutes of mix time. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our application now, generally, I like to just use a fairly inexpensive, they call that a chip brush. That's going to be a three-incher. And when we're getting ready to lay this material down, again, I usually like to go, I like to go narrow first. And I like to put some material down as a primer before we move forward. So I'm going to go ahead and prime this surface. And man, that looks pretty already, doesn't it? I'm gonna prime right up to the top edge. I'm gonna try to move along at boat builder speed. And again, folks, I grew up in a boat shop and you try to do this stuff. It needs to be quality because your name, boy, that's pretty, huh? Look at that. It needs to be quality because your name is on it but you can't drag it out forever. And most of you guys made a comment the other day, we want things to be very, very good, but perfection can be tricky sometimes. And sometimes getting the job done, just moving forward, perfection is just really tricky. Don't, don't expect perfection out of yourself. It's gonna take some practice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my good mask on. Everybody told me that you can still hear me quite well. This is a new mask from 3M that I really like. It's uh keeps out the bad fumes, but it's also fairly easy to converse, or I feel like it's easier for you guys to hear me. So what we're gonna do is I've already got all this labeled, numbered, cut out. We got some primer, and this is our first piece. We got labeled number one. This is the number one side. I know the orientation is up, and we're gonna come over here and believe it or not, we've actually just got a black plastic trash bag. And we taped it to our little work area here so that we can work this resin in. Now I am using a little roller that I've just cut down to size. I've cut it a little bit narrower. I actually cut it off on my bandsaw over there. And it is a Corona glass coater. That's a good high quality roller, but you can use a little foam roller as well. So what we're going to do, we've blown it off. This will help pull some of the extra fibers off of there. And for the sake of time, we're going to try to get this material out of the cup pretty much as quickly as possible. We're trying to move right along. Now, a lot of folks are contacting me that are 
completely new to working with this material. And I would usually recommend guys maybe experimenting with some small pieces before you tackle your main project. Um, now I don't like to work the material a lot with epoxy. I don't want to do a lot of rolling. You kind of want to move nice and slow. We've got our material wet out. We've got our dart already made. And it is okay. It is okay to use your hands at this point. Sometimes that is the best way. And I'm gonna have a little bit of material I'm going to do a little bit of what I call dabbing. Work that in. You don't want to overwork the material. When I mean overwork, you don't want a lot of action. You don't want to introduce a lot of air bubbles and a lot of froth into there. That looks pretty nice. That looks pretty nice. It sure does. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and take piece number two. Again, we see we've got our orientation. Come over. We do not have much resin left. But I like to get it out of the cup. Because again, this stuff will start to kick. Now this is a good time if you have a helper. You can have someone going ahead and making batches up for you guys so you could have you'd have two cups going and you would be going remember we're going one there we go all right we're doing fairly small batches same deal little bigger piece here and again minimal there we go look at that so we're pushing it come on around the other side there we go maybe a little better a little better angle there it just flows all that material out nice Give it a moment to saturate. Not a lot, again, not a lot of aeration and movement. Give that just a moment. Gloved hands, matter of fact, we have two pair. We are double gloved when we're working with epoxy. Epoxy, again, I'm going to reposition that a little bit. It's okay. Sometimes when you place it, if it doesn't go exactly like you want, it is okay. You'll notice here, see we got first layer, second layer, there's going to be a bit of overlap. Same here, this one extends further. So we're getting a gradual transition for the material. And for a lot of applications, two layers is going to be just fine. Two layers is going to be just fine. And again, your hands can work really great. A lot of times we'll use a brush to push and move. Material around. A little bit of dabbing there. Some folks like to use a squeegee blade. That can work. You can actually hear, see there's a little bit of material coming out when we use the,
Very nice. You can also use a little fin, a little fin roller. That is going to be the ticket. Shake the acetone out of there. But you can work that material. Beautifully, I like to push down into the corners and then out to the edges. You can start in the middle and work your way out. The objective is to get the air out of that material and you can physically hear it sometimes. It kind of crackles and pops. And as long as it's crackling and popping, you probably have some air. But you see how going smaller first and then larger it hides that transition so this is going to go back in my i keep an acetone bucket this is how we clean our material matter of fact a lot of times we use squeeze bottle acetone you can use that to kind of get a little bit of cleanup going while you're working that's a good way to keep your hands freshened up a little bit if you if you need to just remember acetone is highly flammable you would want to be super careful okay so that's looking that's looking pretty nice so we're going to switch this around and i'm going to use the roller this time with some of the material okay to use a roller to get again when we do this professionally and even you guys as long as you get a quality job if you can do it faster that's just that much sooner you guys can go sailing or fishing or water skiing or a matter of fact we've been having a lot of folks want to use this for their rv so there's a lot of applications for what we're doing today all right so now this is going to be, again, we've got everything staged. This one's for the middle, but we're going to jump right back over here to our narrow one. Face down. And we're going to try to keep using up our epoxy. We don't want it sitting in the cup. Remember, if you can spread it out okay so here we go again and we're moving fast and again if you have someone helping you do this they can be mixing a batch as you're getting close there we go another batch It gets to be a little assembly line. Yep, you can see I'm pushing, just pushing that little river. And just move with my nice, smooth pressure. Sometimes you can dab it right into the corners. Just like that, we are just clicking next piece little debris on there same deal look at that isn't that pretty isn't that pretty pretty now this piece we obviously i could have trimmed that and if we were making a mock-up stringer this is where your offset would be for the new piece of wood and then your epoxy could just go right over that's okay we can trim that up with no problem. We can trim that up with no problem. Now, one thing you guys can do now, obviously that piece, since we're double gloved, it's real easy to get rid of one, get rid of the other. I'm gonna put a couple fresh ones on and I'm gonna show you guys 
you can come back and trim if need be it's okay i'll show you guys it'll disturb it'll disturb the material a little bit but re-gloving allows me to keep my scissors from just getting completely and at this point see i could actually just tuck that piece right in there or if i wanted to i can peel the piece back off and just trim it just like so there you go now remember if you do that there it is <laughs> if you do that you're going to want to rinse your scissors or else the blades will be will be giving you a big problem later on okie doke so that's ready now what we're going to do i believe folks is we're going to do one layer on the back i'm going to cap and then do one more so this is the 12 inch one which is the the smaller one We've already got all of our pleats and cuts and we're moving right along with this material. Remember, you do not want it sitting for long periods of time in the pot. Important though, to take care of your, looks good. Now, I usually like to prime. I'm going to go ahead and take the roller. Get some resin under that as well. I know this goes right up at the top. Look at that. Woohoo! And we're locking these layers. Isn't that pretty? beautiful 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 now this is the cap piece for sequencing and kind of covering the edges i think i'm going to go ahead and go with the the part that's going to roll over You can see where that nice radius makes a difference. You can hear the little crackles and pops. I've seen some folks here on YouTube that are using, have really sharp edges like this and it'll create an air bubble in there that you do not want. Same goes for that, that inside corner. You want a nice, down in here, you want a nice, again, about like a grown man's finger as far as the the radius or radii ah. six seems like we're in the about six pumps is a good place to be now again while i'm mixing this guys we've got some cool videos coming up Man, my cameraman can zoom in there. We're going to be using some vinyl ester very soon, which I'm excited about. ISO tooling, which isophthalic polyester is what we built our 29 out of. And then you got your ortho polyester laminating. And we've even got some DCPD ortho blend. So I am pretty excited that uh, probably this week we'll get a resin comparison on back on the polyester and vinyl ester side and you guys might really be interested in the vinyl ester especially a lot of good qualities with that resin but it's not a material that a lot of people are familiar with so okay 
Okay, guys. We are now in the home stretch. Beautiful. Look how we got our little pleats, the little designs there. Also, again, temperature has a lot to do with it. Right now, it is mild. It's probably close to 70 degrees. I think that would be 16, 17 degrees um, for you guys. For you guys overseas, that'd be Celsius. I think maybe you guys can help me out. <laughs> About 70 degrees Fahrenheit is what we're dealing with. But I've had a lot of practice at this and I can move along pretty fast. But if it were really hot weather, again, you would want to work with the slower activator and being out in direct sunlight can affect it. So, so UV light will accelerate the cure of this material. So if you can avoid working on direct light or if you have to be outside Maybe you can stretch a tarp of some kind over your workspace and that'll give you a longer work window. Otherwise, this stuff is really, really, really going to go. All right. Just like that. It looks like a pair of diapers or something. All right. Here we go. Nice and easy. Just going to kind of start from the top. Working our way in and down uniformly. We will be making a pretty exciting video release and announcement pretty soon though because a lot of you folks have been requesting time to communicate with me. And that's coming soon. We're going to be working with Patreon where we can actually do some consulting and direct. I can give you guys some email and phone consults. So that's pretty exciting stuff. We're actually at a bit of a crossroads with like our charter business and the youtube channel and i may be spending more time doing this if you guys are excited about that if we see the response we're hoping for it's an exciting thing for me hopefully it's an exciting thing for you going back with a little thin roller right in the corner kind of a light touch Trying to work the air. You can hear the little crackles and pops. Some of these little edges may not lay down perfectly. That's okay. I am going to show you guys and gals how we fared this out as well. Kind of the same as we did on our other demo piece where we fiberglassed it with polyester resin and we had a fantastic response i'm hoping hoping you guys can help this video really really go if you like it be sure again to share it with anybody the more growth we have the more youtube will promote it the more growth we have the more of these kind of videos we can do for you guys so, okay, so I'm going to spin this around one more time. We are kind of in the, kind of in the home stretch there. You can hear... And you can hear some of that air. Our family has rolled out hundreds, well, I'm sure thousands of gallons. But again, more of the polyester, but it actually, there's a lot of similar, similar qualities for sure. And you can see here though how we've got the overlap, the transitions. We're trying to minimize as many of these seams as we can, but you can't make it perfect on this initial pass. It's kind of like if you see anybody doing auto body work or drywall work, it usually takes two or three different phases to get it where, like 
we go from rough glass to you can see this other demo piece where we put PVC pipe and we've actually fared and sanded but there is raw fiberglass under that and it started very similar to the epoxy now again one thing we get a lot of questions about is gel coating over epoxy and again i'm just going to go back and tell you pretty much everybody i talk to that's in the business myself included if you're going to bond with epoxy laminate with epoxy you're probably going to have to finish with some kind of a paint system now i've got one more material that is very popular to work with epoxy and that is a finishing cloth i'm going to set that right there i'm going to mix up one more little tiny batch and I'm going to show you guys how I would work with finishing cloth. We're just going to do one pump. I think that will be enough. Finishing cloth works beautifully if you were doing like a little, like a little stitching glue style skiff. Which again, we're still taking a survey. But the question is, if we build a stitching glue skiff, should we build it out of plywood or should we use something like kusa and i'm curious what you guys would prefer to see us work with we could build it in a traditional style but with modern materials or we could go with marine ply i would love to hear back from you guys so if you want to work with something like a a finishing cloth you could even use it like on these edges Sometimes you can use it like you would map to kind of help just smooth, smooth things. My, my, I think my epoxy is trying to go. <laughs> I think my epoxy is trying to go on me, folks. We've gotten a lot done in a little bit of time. trying to work fast here this stuff works beautifully though and do you see how that cleaned up that really cleaned up those kind of ridges and edges same deal i'm going to put a little bit And that cosmetically really blended. Now, obviously, I could even do more of the finishing cloth. But that really helps blend. To me, if I were using epoxy and I wanted to use 1708 as the structural reinforcement, get some of the finishing cloth. And in a lot of ways, it kind of does the same thing that matte or CSM will do for polyester and vinyl ester and uh yeah so that's a lot <laughs> that's a lot of stuff let's see here if i can Woo. okay well there you go ta-da there there it is and guys and gals again we're going to try to leave this thing a, a very little editing so you guys can really get the gist of it but uh, I think that's going to be it for this episode. Epoxy 101 or how to epoxy over plywood. Again, from my heart, I sincerely thank all of you guys. We want to do more of this. And because of the support we're seeing from you guys toward the channel, we can do it. So it's Captain Joe here with Island Marine Charters, Fish Bump TV here on YouTube, my fantastic cameraman behind the scenes. And as always, we will catch you guys next time out.